Hi, it's Richard here from the Intelligent Advisor IT Consulting, and we're going to talk today briefly about the REST API of the Oracle Intelligent Advisor Hub and how to authenticate yourself to use it in both Postman and SOAP UI. We'll start off with SOAP UI. Let's create a new REST project. And as for this demo, I'm taking the uh, description URL that's provided in the documentation, which will give me a list of the available uh, REST APIs. Um, I'm going to edit it so that it's the correct uh, URL. One thing you'll have to get used to with this is that not every part of this has the same version number. So when you do your authentication call, be ready to enter a different version number. This version number that you're seeing is the version number of the API itself, which may be different to the version number of your hub. So I've set that up and I can go ahead and click Get, which immediately gives me a list of the REST APIs available at this hub. Uh, for those of you who are used to this sort of thing, the swagger.json file, of course, you could load into Swagger UI uh, and uh, it's self-describing and self-documenting. But in here, we can see that there's a variety of services and it also talks about, um, in this case, that services require a token to function correctly. So this is all part of our authentication challenge. This swagger.json file is available without authentication, but pretty much nothing else is in the Oracle Intelligent Advisor hub. So I'm gonna go into SOAP UI now, and I'm going to create authentication details for my future Oracle Intelligent Advisor REST API requests. It's a little bit crowded in here, but you can see down here that there's an authentication button. And I'm going to go ahead and say I want to create a new authentication. It's going to be OAuth 2.0. And I'll give it a good name, such as My OPA Hub. And click OK. So I've created, if you like, the shell of an authentication mechanism. Now I need to provide the details. It says it wants to give me an authentication token. Well, that's very nice, but I have to tell it how to get that authentication token. So I go ahead and click on that little drop down that says get token. Sorry, I'll go ahead and click in the right place. There we go, get token. And I need to start filling this out. Client credentials grant and my username and password from my client, my API client on the hub, and the base URL to the authentication. Uh, as I said earlier, you'll need to go and find the correct URL for the authentication from your version, or either from this file or from the documentation. Paste that in. And with this information, we should be able to get a token. You can see the background has turned green to say that a token has been retrieved for the server. So now that we've done that, let's just tidy this up and move our request back into position so we can see what we do next. We're now in a position where we can try out one of the other URLs, one of the other REST APIs that requires authentication. So let's just change this to a list of users, for example. And we'll change it to get, because it's a get. And I will see a message saying, you do not have permission to perform the operation. This is a very common trap. Uh, even though we're authenticated, it all looks good. You're thinking, well, why doesn't this work? It's because the user in question didn't have the necessary permissions def defined on the hub. And rerun the request. And this time I get the answer. So even though you authenticate, you still need to think about the API client permissions. And you can see another example of that. If I now attempt to look at deployments, I'll get a similar error message because the API client user back in the hub doesn't have the necessary permission, doesn't have manager on at least one on the workspace, at least one workspace, I'm sorry. So now I can try this again, and this time around I will get the correct answer. So that's how you do it in SOAP UI. In Postman, things are a little bit different. We create ourselves a collection and we can set up the authentication, sorry, the authorization in the collection. Let me just name this collection for us. Uh, this is my second demo today. And we'll go to the authorization section of the collection. We'll set OAuth2. And we'll come down here and we'll change this to in the body contents. And once we've done that, we can give our token system a name. So this is just so I don't get lost later on. So I'm setting up the authentication for my collection, and a collection is just a collection of requests. So now I'm in a position to change to client credentials and enter my API user and password and so on, just as we did before. And we can generate a token, and we can take it and say thanks very much.
If we now create in our collection a new request, the request can inherit that authorization. So I'll just create a new request here and I'll make sure that I put it in the right collection. It was collection number two, there we go. Save it to that collection and I can fill in. I don't need to fill in the authorization because it's inherited from the collection, as you can see. And I'll go ahead and enter a URL so I can test my uh, call using Postman. Make a few changes so I don't spell it incorrectly. There we go. Nothing to do on authorization, just click send. And there is my output. So that's how to auth authorize in both Postman and Tosok UI. Thanks for stopping by and I'll see you next time.